So is lactic acid actually a myth? Sort of. So technically, we do produce lactic acid. However, it doesn't even stick around long enough for it to become detectable. And people think that lactic acid actually increases the acidity of a cell. However, lactic acid is actually responsible for decreasing the acidity of a cell. And now let me explain. Typically, we'll produce most of our energy through the mitochondria. However, this process takes quite a long time and it only has a finite capacity. Comparatively, there's another process called anaerobic glycolysis. And this produces a lot less energy, but it's very quick. And when we either need a lot of energy extremely quickly, or we simply need more energy than the mitochondria can actually give us, we'll begin going through this anaerobic glycolysis. So we can use both glucose and fatty acids. And as you'll learn in a minute, lactate and break these molecules down into an end product called acetyl-CoA inside the mitochondria, where it will go through what is called the Krebs cycle and produce approximately 32 ATP. And ATP is actually the energy currency that we use inside of the cell. But let's say we need a lot more ATP than we can facilitate inside the mitochondria. We'll go through this anaerobic glycolysis, and the only molecule we can use is glucose and glucose is broken down into lactate, and there are very, very few ATP molecules produced. It's estimated about two. And in the process, we'll also create a few different acidic molecules, specifically hydrogen ions. But the beautiful thing about lactate is it actually associates with these hydrogen ions. And once it has associated with these ions, it is released into the bloodstream where the ions then disassociate with lactate, leaving us with lactate inside of the bloodstream. Or in the case of the muscle, a lot of times this lactate can actually be directly shuttled into neighboring cells, where lactate can either be turned into pyruvate, which can enter into the mitochondria, but there's actually emerging evidence that lactate itself may actually have a transporter to enter directly into the mitochondria. And I want to give all credits for this work to Dr. George Brooks. The functions of lactate are a lot more complex than we first thought. But this lactate eventually is also turned into acetyl-CoA, where it again enters the Krebs cycle and can be turned into these 32 ATP molecules. So oftentimes we actually create lactate in one cell and export it into neighboring cells where it's used for energy. So a lot of people think that the thing that makes their muscles burn is lactic acid. However, lactate is the molecule they're actually thinking of, and lactate is used to bind to these hydrogen and acidic molecules and take them out of the cell where they are no longer causing this low pH and acidic sensation. And then once the lactate is out of the cell it's being produced in, this lactate is actually a potent fuel source either for neighboring muscle cells or for very important tissues like the brain and the heart. And the last thing I'll mention is that it actually appears that lactate has signaling roles inside of the body. Once again, I credit this work to Dr. George Brooks. He truly is the leading researcher on lactate and its physiological effects. However, it does appear that lactate and the presence of lactate inside of a cell can increase the translation of what he has said to be more than 600 genes. And these genes are actually part of the DNA that code for specific proteins that help us better utilize lactate and other proteins that are involved in actually increasing our mitochondria capacity and density. Therefore, in the future, we may actually produce a little bit less lactate. And when we produce less lactate, we will typically produce less of the associated acidic molecules. So in the future, we have a better ability to actually use any lactate. And this adaptation can be measured in the blood of athletes. As I mentioned, when we produce lactate, it's typically shunted into the bloodstream. However, in athletes at the same intensity, they'll have less lactate in the bloodstream. Even if they produce the same amount, they'll actually be utilizing more of it. Therefore, there's less byproduct in the bloodstream. This is often referred to as the lactate threshold, and this is the threshold by which your blood lactate levels begin to increase. And we see that athletes increase their lactate threshold as a response to specifically high intensity training where they're producing a lot of lactate.
as they get better and more adapted at this type of training, the amount of lactate that's released into the bloodstream is reduced. And alongside many other mechanisms, one of the reasons for this is because when they produce that lactate, the last time they engaged in a similar intensity of exercise, this lactate had the signaling roles I discussed earlier. And the activation of these genes allowed them to increase their mitochondrial capacity so they produced less lactate and increase their ability to actually use this lactate in the first place. And the result is that they can maintain the same intensity with lower blood lactate levels. So I hope this maybe inspired you to look a little bit deeper into lactate and lactic acid and maybe question some of the things that you've learned in the past. It is true that we produce lactate and hydrogen ions at the same time during exercise. However, this lactic acid that does form is extremely transient and it's actually used to shuttle these hydrogen ions out of the cell. And I guess the last thing I'll mention is why this is important. Not only do these ions cause the acidic feeling inside the muscle, but many of the enzymes inside of the muscles are actually pH dependent enzymes and they stop functioning when the pH of the cell gets below a specific pH level. And pH is negatively associated with the amount of acidity or acidic molecules inside of the cell, which means the more acidic a cell is, the lower the pH and the more of these enzymes begin to stop functioning. And this is why even if we have the greatest pain tolerance in the world, when a lot of these acidic molecules accumulate inside of the cell because they're not being carried out by lactate, maybe because our ability to remove and reuse lactate is deficient, they may accumulate inside of the cell, therefore actually inactivating some of the enzymes required in producing muscular contractions in the first place. So at a cellular level, we simply can't continue to contract our muscles, even if we have the greatest pain tolerance in the world. And unfortunately for us, we need to actually produce this lactate to get these adaptations, meaning we'll have to do the exercises that hurt a little bit, like high intensity intervals and higher repetition strength training workouts.